All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Kinshada Daniels. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am the founder of Off the Hamster Wheel Ministries. And I am on all of your social media um, platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So um, last year I started um, as for a first time teaching focus, how to overcome distractions. So the first time I actually taught this, which I set it up as a webinar, um, I got a lot of feedback, you know, um, positive feedback, you know, of those encouraging me to kind of like keep this going, do it uh, quarterly or yearly. So with this being a new year, 2021, we are actually in 2021. So I was like, you know what? Perfect timing to discuss being focused and overcoming distractions so that you can set the tone for the rest of your year. So, all right, so let's get started. The title of this presentation is Focus, Overcoming Distractions. Now, I know everybody out there um, should know what a distraction is. It's something that causes you to lose focus and robs you of your time and throws you off course. So let's dive in. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this presentation. This is to provide you with practical ways to increase your focus. Now, all of us can benefit from that. All of us can use ways and tools to help us stay on track and stay focused. So number one point, we will discover your gifts and talents. Hopefully by listening to this presentation, by the end of it, you will have a little bit better idea of what's your gifts and your talents. Okay, so second, we are going to design a personal roadmap. This is something for you to do. So as you're going through this presentation, listening to this video, um, however, whatever your means are by getting this information and watching, you should be able to sit down, take a notepad and jot down personal goals, things that you want to accomplish this year and set it up as a roadmap, you know, one step at a time. All right, so third, you're going to decide every day to act. Again, this is something that you have to do, decide every day to act. And what I mean by that is deciding to do something toward your goal, it, whether how little, small or big it is, decide every day to do something towards your goal, okay? We have a whole year to discover of 2021, so. Let's get started. All right, how does it work? Right, I'm pretty sure all of you by now is like, okay, yeah, I wanna focus more. I wanna know what I can do to achieve that, but how does it work? How does it actually work? What can I do to put things into motion? Right, so you see the little notepad there, work in progress. It's all a work in progress. When you're achieving your goals um, or even working on yourself, bettering yourself is a work in progress. So you have to allow time and patience to work in you and on your side. All right. Okay, this is the focus strategy. So this is the strategy that I've broken up into three phases. Okay, so... First phase is your discovery. This is the phase where usually the lights got to come on, right? The little light bulb, you know, in movies, when they show the little light bulb coming on above someone's head, that means, okay, it finally clicked. They got it. So this is the part that you come in. You have to really actually sit down and think and be like, okay, what do I want to do? You know, what do I want to achieve? You know, what do I want to make better? In this phase, we discover your gifts, your talents, as well as your distractions. We discuss the areas you lack focus. So 
to get a little bit more detail, um, you know, in this phase one, you can easily contact me and schedule a, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultation. So, but what I want you to do for yourself is write down some of the things that you know are your gifts and your talents. And then also be able to write down some distractions you have, like what takes your focus away from, you know, putting in time or, um, you know, building your gifts and your talents and really um, letting those shine. What is taking away um, that focus? So once you be, once you're able to uh, realize and see the areas where you lack focus, then it'll help you to build and correct those things. You may not be able to do it all overnight, but at least once you know what the problem is, then you can start finding the right solutions, right? So I call this the discovery phase. All right. So phase two is the plan. Got to visualize it. Okay. Phase one, we're recognizing, okay, what is the problem? Where are my weak, weak areas? You know, where are the distractions? So once you write those down, then you have to move to the second phase, which is the plan. What are the solutions? What am I going to do about it? In this phase, we will set goals, whether short-term or long-term, to ensure the best outcome. So the first thing you're going to do in phase two is set short-term or long-term goals, depending on you as a person. Of course, you don't want to overwhelm yourself, spread yourself out too thin. You know, you want to be realistic when you're setting goals, something that can be um, achieve and that's attainable. So you, I would say start with three, right? Three goals down. Then this phase is designed to make sure you view yourself through the lens of greatness. Now, once you write down your goals and hopefully they are realistic, you got to be able to have faith and believe that you can achieve those goals. You have to know and believe that there is greatness inside of you. So when you're viewing something through the lens of greatness, um, then you will be able to change and shift your mindset to not give up when things get hard, not give up when it seems like it's not coming together or working out for you. You know, you have to have the mindset of staying focused, being determined and seeing yourself through the lens of greatness that you can do it. You can actually meet your goals and more. So let's move to phase three. Phase three is the action, right? So you got to put in the work. All right. This is the part where you've got to actually put in the work. You've got to actually, you wrote everything down, you set the goals. Now, how are you going to work towards the goals? What are you actually going to do to achieve these goals? In this phase, we all know you get out what you put in, meaning it's going to take work to accomplish your goals. Right. I'm pretty sure everybody has heard the saying, you get out what you put in. So if you work hard and you're putting in the work, you're putting in the time, you're putting in the energy, you're staying focused, then that's what you're going to get out of it. You're going to see the rewards. You're going to see you begin to achieve your goals. Then you're going to move to setting new goals. And then you're going to start achieving um, things that you never thought of only by being determined, setting a pace for yourself, staying focused and minimizing distractions will lead you to the end result, which is achieving your goals. I want everybody to be able to um, achieve their goals and be successful, right? That's the end goal. So like, what are we living for? We're living to better our lives and achieve goals and also set examples for our children that they too can achieve their goals and you know, make life worth living and, you know, and uh, support each other while doing it. So, all right. Okay, drum roll. Let's discuss distractions. This is going to get good because we all are familiar with distractions. All right. 
So here on this next slide, I've put here common distractions. So I've only listed five, you know, some of us may have more or less, or it may be uh, more in depth than others or more trying than others. But these are some of the common distractions that I find myself um, having dealt with throughout my life and, and, you know, even talking with others, you know, some of the things that they've been distracted by. But I think this is a pretty good list to get started. And I think these are kind of like um, the top, the top few distractions. Okay, so number one, the first common distraction can be family, right? Our family requires our time and attention on a daily basis. So whether you're single, married, children, no children, uh, if you have aunts, uncles, cousins, grandma, parents, you know, the list goes on. Family sometimes can be a common distraction because family, family can be demanding. And what I mean by demanding, it can require more of our time. And then a lot of times we don't have a choice, especially if you're a parent and you have children, you don't necessarily have a choice because there's certain things that you have to do on a daily basis for your children to make sure your household is running or operating a certain way. I get that. But at the same time, we have to have those healthy boundaries in place that we're just not wasting time um, or using the family distractions as an excuse to waste time and not do anything more pro productive towards your future or something that can benefit you. So we have to be careful and learn how to balance. You know, um, children uh, a certain age should have a bedtime you know, the same bedtime every night, they should be on a routine schedule for um, by now, you know, you should have set up a dinner time, bath time, bedtime, you know, set aside time for, you know, their homework. And then those of you that don't have children, if you have a spouse, you know, make sure you want to have time for you and your spouse to share. And then also for you to work on, you know, your goals and certain things that you want to do. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit a better insight on family. The second thing that is a common distraction is money, right? We all love it. We all want it and we all need it. Um, this is something that makes the world go round, <laughs> so to speak. But the pursuit of getting money can be a cycle of no end. See, some of us get tied into a cycle of, I need more money, you gotta get more money money, 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 money. And then it becomes a cycle with no end. You know, as soon as you get money, you, you're trying to get more, you're trying to get more. There should always be a balance in the things that we do in life. Yes, we do need money for, you know, a lot of our basic needs, um, you know, like food, gas, water, whatever. Yes, we do need money. But making the pursuit of money your primary focus is not good because if you're focusing on this one thing, then you, everything else is out of balance. It's out of alignment. So if everything else is out of alignment, then you're not, you're not, you don't have any extra time to do anything towards your, um, you know, your goals or, you know, uh, increasing sales in your business or starting a nonprofit or doing volunteer work, you know, so money is something that we need, but it's not something that we should be chasing down, you know, because I believe if you're in position and you're in alignment with God, the money will chase you down. So we have to remember to um, be mindful of not making money um, a priority or something that we're worshiping. All right. Number three, the third common distraction is time. If not managed well, we end up wasting it. I think this one is a big one. Um, of course, you know, we want to enjoy life and have fun and, you know, live and hang out and travel, visit. All of those things are good. And especially good for those of us who, um, who really, really work hard. We need that break every now and again. And, you know, and again, to just, you know, relax and just take a deep breath. 
and, you know, just um, enjoy, you know, nature and things like that. But sometimes we can end up wasting time uh, frivolously by, you know, staying on the phone, gossiping for hours or, you know, just hanging out with someone and they're not doing anything uh, productive or just sitting around binge watching TV. Now, I'm not talking about those of you who binge watch while you're on vacation. Okay, that's understandable. But I'm talking about those who aren't doing anything productive, you know, day to day and just been watching TV shows or Netflix and just, you know, sitting on the couch and just wait, letting time pass them by. No, time is a very, very, very um, expensive uh, commodity because it's very special. It's something that we can't get back. You know, once it's gone, um, once the day is over, that's it. You know, you have to start fresh each day. So we need to have um, limits and, you know, with our time, you know, if you get on the phone with somebody, well, I'm only going to spend 30 minutes with that. If you have a consultation schedule, you know, make sure you're scaling, scheduling your consultations and, you know, in, uh, you know, time intervals that are right for you. So we also, but, you know, should definitely, definitely guard our time. Even the Bible tells us to redeem our time. We shouldn't be wasteful when it comes to time. So that's a third common distraction. Um, the fourth common distraction is relationships, relationships. The wrong relationship can cost more than what you can pay. Um, I don't know about any of you, but um, if you've been in some relationships and you invested a lot, but the return was zero or the, the return didn't match the investment you put in uh, relationships that are not meant for us or relationships that are bad for us end up costing more than what we intended to pay and invest. And also it can be a huge distraction because we tend to focus more on the relationship and the other person. And, and you know, and the way I'm talking about somebody you're not even married to, you know, we tend to um, put a lot of time and effort into them and push ourselves and our goals to the back burner so to speak and we end up losing time so by the time it, the relationship is done and over with we have nothing to show for it then we'll end up feeling behind time that um you know and start beating yourself up saying oh man I wish I wouldn't have done that I, you know but it's too late at that point so that's the whole purpose of this um, focus presentation to hopefully get you guys before you allow these distractions to um, take course in your lives. So the fifth distraction is self, self. That's right. Most of you probably don't even think like self, me? How am I a distraction? Well, the way you perceive yourself means everything in progress. So if, um, let's say, you know, God has given you great gifts and, you know, you have um, this great purpose to utilize your gifts and help people in the world, but you self-sabotage by saying, oh, I can't do that. Uh, my past, everything I've done in my past, people are not going to listen to me or I don't, I don't want to, um, I'm too shy. I don't want to go up there on Facebook live, or I don't want people judging me. I don't, I don't want to do that. So that's how self gets in the way with self-sabotage. You can talk your way out of doing things, um, setting goals, achieving goals, pro progressing during, through life, but by you having the, the lack of self-confidence. So it's very important for us to be able to recognize um, the areas that we are self-sabotaging and holding back from our future and you know moving into purpose and moving into um, the areas we should be and utilizing our gifts and our talents. So I hope that this part of the presentation, Common Distractions, got you to think and really um, analyze 
your life and do self-reflection to really figure out, you know, where are the areas that some of these common distractions may be hindering you and robbing you from moving forward. Okay. All right. So here's a few tips. Uh, I'm just going to give you a few tips to get you going, to get you started. So tips, here's a few tips in helping you stay focused while managing common distractions. Okay, tip number one is schedule. <clears throat> I know this may be like elementary and, you know, something basic, but how many of you know, like myself, um, this can be very vital and staying focused. Creating a schedule helps to manage your day-to-day -day responsibilities. Also putting reminders on a calendar can help you stay on task. I've been utilizing my calendar, my scheduling for, the, for over a year now, for like the last two years, I've been utilizing these tools a lot more than I did prior in my life. You know, when I didn't have a schedule in place or was very uh, careful with how I spent my time, a lot of time ended up getting wasted, things didn't get done, and I seemed to be stuck in the same spot, in the same position. So once I started establishing a schedule and utilizing my calendar, it helped me to be more productive, more um, efficient in you know, my day-to-day -day, um, activities, uh, even with work, even with the children, appointments, you know, getting a schedule and maintaining the schedule is a easy, simple, simple tool to help you stay focused and on track. You know, just, just try it. Try it. It's so many different um, scheduling apps out there. You can even use the calendar on your phone. You know, um, when you set appointments, you can uh, post them to your Google calendar and it automatically populate on your phone. So scheduling is something basic but very, very, very important in helping you to stay focused and on track. The second thing you can do is time management. Monitor how much time you spend on social media, watching TV and other outlets. So this is something that's um, especially good in the day and age that we're living in because a lot of people are on social media. Like everything is like virtual right now. That's the platform. Um, collectively is virtual. So being able to monitor, okay, how much time are you going to spend on social media? When it comes to social media, there are apps out there that you can go ahead and schedule your posts. You can have scheduled posts that are posted to all of your out, um, all of your platforms. You just have to go in and enter them and then it frees up time that you could be doing on other things, which I have myself. I've used the apps. They're very good. Um, I mean, very good as far as saving time. Also watching television, like I mentioned on the slide before, uh, being mindful of how much TV that you're taking in. Um, also, you want to be careful of what you are watching, especially if you are wanting to start a new business this year, start a nonprofit, a ministry, or whatever. You want to um, be able to put as much time into it that you need to get it going, because it's not just going to spring up off the ground by itself. You're going to have to put work into it to get your business and or ministry off the ground and get it to, um, you know, the place that you want to go, where whatever the goal is that you set for it. And also other outlets um, there, like I mentioned before, you know, staying, spending hours on the phone gossiping. OK, you can't do that in 2021. You got you got people to help. You've got goals to achieve. So that's out of the question. Tell them you don't have time to talk on the phone about so-and-so. You got things to do and goals to meet, all right? So, and the third tip I'm going to give you is education. Education. Now, you really don't even have to go in person anywhere to take a class, a course, a conference, a webinar. You know, most of these things are done virtually online. So take advantage, reading, studying, or watching materials that enhance your personal growth. This should be your mindset. You need to shift your mindset to, in 2021, I'm going to better myself. I'm going to enhance my personal growth. 
And whatever you have to do, if you have to buy a book that will help, help you with character building, help you with business skills, or take a course, or, you know, buy study materials or watching webinars, videos, you know, whatever it takes, get the money, invest in yourself, invest in your personal growth. Because once you grow personally, that's going to ripple effect throughout your businesses, your ministries, your interaction with your family, coworkers, friends. So always make working on personal growth a basic, um, I would say a number one uh, thing to do each year. And just don't do it at the beginning of the year. Work on yourself throughout the entire year. And you'll, and you'll see each year things get better and better and better for you. So make the investments, you know, set the money aside. If you could spend money on, you know, name brand purses, shoes, uh, fast food, why not take that money and invest in yourself and, you know, take a course, um, sign up for a course. And for those of you that don't know, I have an online business course, how to start your own business. Um, it is totally online. You have lifetime access to the course. You, you move at your own beat, your own pace. Um, it's very affordable, but just things like that. You know, when you see someone hosting a webinar, whether it's free or if it's cost, you know, don't be afraid to jump in and take it, you know, take advantage of the resources that we have to help us to better ourselves and also to help us stay focused. Because if you are taking a course or a webinar, then you're focused on that. You're not wasting time doing other things. So that, that's how you gotta think. You gotta think growth, growth, growth in all areas. All right, so, okay, what are some benefits? So if you can see here on this slide, I have the picture that says hard work pays off in the future. Laziness pays off now, right? So just like I was just telling you, you know, working hard towards your goals to stay focused, you will see the end results in the future. But if you want to be lazy and don't want to be focused, you know, it's going to show. It's gonna, you're going to reap the benefits of that, which are none, right? For anybody that's being lazy. Okay, so let's discuss some benefits of staying focused because you might be saying in your mind, Okay, why should I stay focused? You know, how's it going to help me? Why even do it? Why even try um, to have some type of structure in your lives? Okay, number one, it builds character. Character building is very important throughout life. It teaches us valuable lessons, right? So from a child growing up, you know, we were always taught, you know, um, what's right, what's wrong. And some of us, we have that in, innate intuition to know what's right and wrong, okay? And then when we get to school, we learn about different things, do's and don'ts. So character building ha has always been a part of our lives since we entered this earth. Even now in adulthood, we're still building our characters. We're still enhancing our personal growth. So one of the benefits of having a focused life, a life that you are disciplined, in the areas that you need it the most, it helps you build character. It helps keep you from, um, you know, getting into certain things that can destroy character, right? So we always wanna focus on um, things that will teach us valuable lessons in life. Of course, we can, you know, receive these lessons through different means, you know, um, from school, church, work, you know, our interactions with people, um, it doesn't matter. We're, we're always in the, the position of learning, you know, and being taught lessons. The second thing, the second benefit is better relationships, right? Okay. Like I told you, you know, you get your character on point. It starts rubbing off into your relationships, forming relationships that add to us instead of taking away makes a better person for others. Right. So if you are a person who cares about your personal growth, you have goals in life, you're staying focused, you know, you're being there for your family, your children, and, you know, you're not wasting time, you're not out drinking and partying and doing all this crazy stuff, 
you know, you will naturally attract those people that are doing the same things that's on the same frequency as you. So it'll help you form better relationships. And so the ones that don't want to set their lives um, in order, they will tend to fall off. They wouldn't want, they don't want to hang around you anymore. They don't um, have anything to talk about anymore because once you set those limits up and those healthy boundaries, they will fall off, which is fine. That's cool. You know, you want the dead weight to fall off anyway, because you are going higher and higher. So you're progressing. So those who don't want to choose to progress with you, then let them fall off and stay where they down at the bottom or wherever they want to um, stay. So the second benefit is better relationships. Now let's talk about the third benefit. The third benefit is redeem the time. When you are aware of time, you make better choices, not to waste time, right? So if you are a time conscious person, you will make better choices in things that will not waste your time. You'll be more alert. So when someone comes along and, you know, they say, like, hey, come go with me over here or, or they call you, hey, girl, you want to know what's happened? Or, you know, you are instantly recognized that uh, I can't do that. I can't waste 30 minutes of my time um, sitting around talking about somebody else or going to um, ride around town with somebody. Now, of course, you know, there are those moments where, okay, we should get out. We should go and grab a bite to eat or something to drink or, you know, play a game, watch a movie with our families. Of course, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those instances where you know it will be a complete waste of your time. It's not productive at all, any way, shape, or form. So once you become time conscious, you'll be able to recognize and shut those things down immediately and cut it off. Cut it off. Because like I said, we have work to do. We have people to help, um, families, children to raise. Um, you know, So we just have, once you know you have greatness inside of you, don't let it go to waste. You know, don't let your talents be unused. Don't bury your talents. Use them while you are here on earth because there are people around that can benefit from what you bring um, by using your gifts and your talents. There are people all over the world that can benefit from that. So don't bury your talents. We, um, God wants us to use those things that he has placed inside of us. Okay, so those are three benefits. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, here's the summary. Learning to focus in everyday life. Okay, so here's three pointers to summarize everything that we've been discussing. So the first point is be conscious of possible distraction and their effect on your goals. Okay, so just be conscious of distractions, be able to recognize them when they come and look, be able to um, look and see the effect they're having on your goals. Most of the time, distractions, if they don't slow you down from achieving your goals, they make you quit altogether. They, you lose the desire for wanting to achieve goals in the first place. Second point, be aware of where you invest time and manage it well. Just understand you know, where you put in your time and make sure you investing it well and managing it well. It's not a hard task with some of the tools that I gave you guys to put in place. It's not hard to manage your time well. The third point is be determined to make the most out of each day. So this is something you have to wake up with, a determination that you want to make the most out of each day. Whatever it takes, whatever that looks like for you in your situation, your personal life, Make the most out of each day. If it's to wake up and, you know, tell God, thank you, um, you know, complete one task and watch one movie with your children. OK, if that's what it is for you, then make the most out of it. So I'm just here to encourage you just to um, be mindful and do things, um, you know, do, to do things that will help you stay focused. All right. So. All right, here's a little bit about me, the presenter. Uh, my name is Kinshada Daniels. I'm the founder of Off the Hamster Wheel. 
Ministries, and I am a author of two books. The first one is called Set in the Stage. The second one is, is called um, Spiritual Detox. So I am a certified life coach, um, an inspirational speaker. A, I do own a home care company. So I also help a lot of home care um, owners with billing and things like that. So I'm pretty well-rounded. I am a nurse by profession. And um, I am also a teacher naturally. This is one of the gifts that God has given me that I have been utilizing. So, all right, applause. So I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video. I ask that you will please share this video with others. You know, some of us, um, um, you know, you never know who's out there that's struggling and how and how to stay focused and how to manage it all, how to juggle, you know, being married or single with children, um, no children working full time and having, you know, different aspirations for business, ministry, you know, school. So, hey, you know, do a good deed and share this video with your friends and your family. All right, so I can be reached. Um, I, you can also email me at kinshada2000 at yahoo.com or visit my website at www.offthehamster, H-A-M-S-T-E-R, wheel.com, offthehamsterwheel.com and check out my life preparation school will you, where you will see all the online courses that I am offering right now. Also, um, on my shop page, I have a Queens Don't Compete, They Collaborate t-shirt, which is jeweled out. It is beautiful. You definitely want to get that shirt um, because that's a movement all by itself that I want to start with women all over the world, no matter where you are, what color you are. We need to know that we are queens. We are not competing with each other. We should be collaborating with each other, building each other up and supporting one another. So if you would like to join that movement and purchase your shirt, just go to my website at www.offthehamsterwheel.com, visit my shop and also take this time. You know, some of you may, you know, um, get money this month. Um, uh, you know, the stimulus or whatever, your income tax check, in, invest in you, you know, check out some of the online courses I have and some of the, you know, people that's connected to me and invest in you. That's what I've been doing. You know, once I changed my mindset and I shifted um, about four years ago, I started investing in others. I started taking courses. Oh, I've bought so many books these last four years. I've just been reading books and, you know, gaining knowledge, but also implementing it and sharing it with others to build each other up. Right. So that's what we should do. So we should be doing. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope that this was a blessing. If you are watching this on YouTube, please share your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think um, about this presentation and what would you like for me to teach on next? If it's something that you want um, in particular, um, I don't mind. I'm taking suggestions. You know, I love to teach. I, you know, have a few videos on different subjects, but just let me know in the comment sections. All right. Thank you.